Okay, for those who weren't in class today and for those who need to recap, let me let me go over what we what we covered. Um, first of all, we talked, we debriefed the lab. And so, for example, we've got this uh, graph over here of Will pushing the block. And you can see the block as it moves slows down, and that's indicated by this curve graph. We do a curve fit of that graph, and this is our equation. X is equal to AT squared plus BT plus C. And A is this number here, and B is this number here, and C is this number here. Okay, so let's, you know, the today we're trying to match the, the graph, which comes from the data, which comes from, you know, mathematics um, in the laboratory, to the physics equation. All right, and the physics equation, you can see, is here. And we're going to primarily be interested in this one, because this is the one that matches up most nicely with um with this equation, x equals at squared, and let me move this over here, okay, x equals a, big A, this that number here, t squared plus bt plus c, and this is x is equal to one half at squared plus bit plus xi. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to compare the physics equation with the equation from the lab. So if I grab a text box and type in the laboratory equation, okay, we see that x, come on, we see that x is equal to negative 0.97. This is just um, 0 0.97. This is just my data. Yours is going to be a little different, okay times t squared, oops, t squared, plus b is 2.46, times t, as we see here, right, plus, and then c is this negative number, negative 0 0.00956, okay, let me stretch that a little bit to make it fit, I see. All right, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to compare this, right? And so over here, we have x equals, and over here we have an x equals. So, so far, these look pretty much the same. And then we have some number here, and we have some number, and then we have a t squared number, and over here we have a t squared number. So certainly looking pretty good. And then we add another number times t, and over here we're adding another number times t, so those look like they are pretty good. All right, let me change colors here. And so then we're going to just play Sesame Street. We're going to compare the values over here. So this xi, this plus a number, and this have got to be the same thing, because this has the same form. x equals a number t squared plus bit plus a number. And here is x is equal to a number plus t squared plus a number t plus a number. So this number and this number must be the same. So we know that the initial position is this number here, negative 0 0.00956. And if you recall, the initial position was close to zero because that's what we clicked on. And that's what we said was zero. And so that's a pretty small number. It's very close to zero. Okay, so what does this represent in the, in the data? Well, this represents this guy. Okay, so VI is 2.46. So that tells us that the initial velocity of the cart moving into the, into the field of view or into the block was 2.46 meters per second. And then finally, what does this number mean? Negative 0 0.197. So this is one that trips up everybody. That is equal to that. Okay, and so what we, what we could do is we can write this as one half of A one half of our acceleration is equal to, in this case, negative 0 0.97. Okay, so what does A equal? What does the acceleration equal? The acceleration is equal to twice that. Okay, and what is twice of 0 0.97? It's negative 0, oops, sorry. Uh, It's negative um, 1.94. All right. 
And so that is what the acceleration is. This is the initial velocity. This is the initial position. And when you double this number here, that becomes the acceleration in meters per second squared, meters per second, meters. Cool? All right. So that is one, um, one, ana you know, one analysis that we did in class. All righty. Let's take a look at another logger pro. Now, then Will came up. And we'll drop the baseball under the under the Sonic Ranger, and the ball fell away from the Sonic Ranger, which looks like it's going up, but in fact it was going down. So the Sonic Ranger is up here, and then the ball the ball drops this way. Okay, and so now we have a curve fit here. So again, pulling up the pulling up our equation, what does what was um, According to this graph, what was the initial position? Well, C is the initial position of the ball. And again, that's at time zero. So you kind of have to be careful here. At time zero, what was the position? Time zero was way over here. We started the, the data collection, and then the ball dropped there sometime later. But according to this graph, C, the, the original position way over here, was 0.64. And the initial velocity over here was negative 3.2. Um, and then this is the number that we really care about. We were looking to see what was the acceleration in the, in the laboratory. And this number, let's just call it 5. And so this is A, capital A. And so what is the acceleration? Well, we know that one half of the acceleration is equal to that number there. So if one half the acceleration is equal to 5, then we know the acceleration of the baseball as it falls in the classroom is close to 10. Okay, the magnitude of the acceleration is close to 10. And yay, that's what we should get because the acceleration should be 9.8. The magnitude should be 9.8 and 9.8 is pretty close to 10. So, you know, we pat ourselves on the back. We, we know that we're living on Earth and we've just verified it. Okay. All right. So those were a couple of examples we, we worked in class and Let's let's switch over to some paperwork, okay? And then I gave you uh, gave some students a little uh, not a quiz, but I said pull out a sheet of paper and and let's talk about this graph, okay? So we have a position time graph like this, and let's say that we have a line going up like so. So this is position and time that's a straight line. And our equation was x is equal to 5t plus 3. Just something we make up. Okay, so what does, what does that mean? And then I asked, well, what is the initial velocity? What's the initial position? And what's the, what's the acceleration? Okay, and already people got kind of confused because they went straight away and they said, oh, let's just double this number, and that's the acceleration. But look, this is linear. This is sort of like the toy car lab. This is exactly what the toy car lab gave us, right? And what do we know about the velocity of the toy car lab? We know the velocity is constant. And if the velocity is constant, what does that tell us about the acceleration? We know the acceleration is zero. Okay, so that's what this graph tells us. This is a bit of, re of a review, and I, I tripped up some people because we went backwards, and folks were going, trying to look at, at uh, this quadratic, but this isn't quadratic, this is linear. So where does this equation come from? Well, this equation, we can rewrite it as x is equal to 0t squared plus 5t plus 3. That's the same thing, isn't it? 0t squared, right? And why did we do that? We did that because we know that the physics tells us Physics tells us that. And so now let's again play Sesame Street and group terms. So zero and one half of A are grouped because they belong to the T squared term. And five and VI is grouped because are, are grouped because they belong to the T term. And these numbers here at the end belong together. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us once again that XI is equal to three. And vi is equal to 5, and 1 half of a is equal to 0. And if half of a is 0, then therefore a is also 0. So we can get information from that. All right.
Okay, and the last um, a little example we did in class was something like this. So we have a position time graph, x in meters, okay, and t in seconds. And then I said, oh, right, let's let's draw the graph. And it looks something like this, maybe. Okay, and then we made up some numbers about what this what this uh, curve fit might look like. And I think we came up with something like x is equal to 8. Um, yeah, 8 t squared minus 4 t plus 10. Okay, so you won't ever have to come up with those numbers in this class, but, but let's just pretend that we, we fit a curve and this is what our data, this is what our data shows us. Okay, so what does that mean? All right, um, so I, I said, so what is this value right there? How, what is that number along the x-axis? In other words, at time zero, what is x? In other words, what is xi? And again, we, we, need to, we need to think about it in terms of um, x is equal to 1 half at squared plus vit plus xi. All right, and so again, we match up terms. xi is 10. vi, be careful, vi is negative 4, and 1 half of a is equal to 8. So let's just write those down. So we know that xi is 10, so we know that this number is 10 meters. 10 meters. Okay, that's the initial position. And then I said, well, how fast is it moving? What is its initial velocity? And the initial velocity is minus 4 meters per second. So we know that this that slope right there is minus 4 meters per second. And then this is the hard one. What is A? So just think about it. What is A? What is the acceleration? Is it 8? Is it 4? Is it 16? Is it something else? Okay, and this trips up more people than you could possibly imagine. So what I recommend people do is you write down what you know. You know that 1 half of A is equal to 8. Right? And now people still try to do the mental gymnastics here in their head, and they get it wrong more often than not. And so how do we get rid of the one half? Well, we can multiply both sides by two. And that gets rid of one half over here. And so A is equal to, now this is easy, 16. Most people will say A is equal to 8. And then if you don't say that, then you say probably A is equal to 4, which it's not. A is equal to 16. And because we're in meters, you know, this is in meters. This is in seconds, but this is in meters per second squared. Cool. And then we solve some we solve some problems. So I said um, at three seconds, at t equals three seconds, what is the position? Okay, so pause the video real quickly and calculate that. And how do you do that? Well, what you do is you just simply you're looking for the position. You're looking for x. You're looking for this guy here. Okay. And so you just plug in three seconds. So when you when you plug three seconds into here, x is equal to eight. I'm going to not use units. I'm in a hurry here. Minus four times three plus ten. And um, when you do that, we calculate this to be seven zero or seventy meters. Okay. And you when you do the math, you plug in t is three seconds. And then so then, so this is x final. So this is this is the position at time at time t. So then I said, well, what was delta x? Well, we know that delta x is x final minus x initial. And what was x final? Well, x final was 70 meters. And x initial, well, we know that from up here, x initial is 10 meters. And so we know that that's equal to 60 meters. So in three seconds, the object went had a displacement of six zero meters. So in other words, it went from here way up to here, way up to, sorry, uh, way up to 70 meters. It went to 70 meters. So when you look over here, boom, this is where the object was. Okay. And so we know that this is three seconds. Does that make sense? And that's the kind of stuff we, we played around with. All right.